Hello YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Nerdway Place. So, last we left our hero Roland, we were in uh, the Crimson Enclave. And we gotta reactivate the Echocom system. Sounds easy enough, right? You know, I was playing um I was playing Fallout New Vegas earlier, so. I have to readjust to the FPS controls on here. They're a little, a little different. And I, I only played because uh, what did I just watch? I just, I just rewatched uh, 310 to Yuma. So I'm like, maybe a Western game sounds pretty fun to play. And while I was leaning toward Red, Dem Red Dead Redemption, which is a fantastic game, I'm like, you know, I haven't played New New Vegas in a minute. So let's go that route. That's enough shotgun shells. I don't think we're gonna. All right. So, if we take a peek, it looks like the uh, the guardians, the aliens, are fighting fighting the. Uh... Oh gosh, I can't even think right now. The the uh, crimson lance. There we go. They're fighting the crimson lance, and we're just gonna hang back. Let them duke it out, let them wear each other out, and then we'll go in and clean up. If I sound a bit hyper today, it's the caffeine. I try to limit my caffeine intake, but you know, I just get cravings for... I just, I just really crave it sometimes. Right now we're drinking Cherry Coke. I want a Del Taco and got a... Got a taco and a cherry coke, and I love cherry coke. You know what I've also noticed is that their cups are really big compared to an equivalent fast food. Like their medium looks like a large somewhere else. Like even their small size is still it seems to be like a pretty generous, uh, a pretty generous serving. So gotta love Del Taco, and there's one. Like, literally down the street from my house. So it's always kind of been a... Uh... Oh, too close there, my friend. Too close for comfort. <laughs> He's like, I'm shooting the alien, shooting this guy. Shooting the alien, shooting this guy. Make up your mind, sir. <laughs> See ya. Um, yeah, I remember... Um, we had moved like years ago. I was like, "Geez, what year? What that would have been? It would have been 2010." And I was a I was a junior in college, and we had just moved um, to new house. Um, and we got pretty lucky because, like, right down the street from our house, you know, practically within walking distance, we had uh, a pretty nice selection of. Of uh, food places, there's a Jack in the Box. There was a uh, one of those KFC Taco Bell combo um, spots, and that actually later became a Starbucks, which is really interesting. Uh, because originally, they're they're in the same lot. It's just the Jack in the Box was on the corner, and then the KFC Taco Bell was on the other side of the parking lot. But what's interesting is they were originally going to close the Jack in the Box, which was almost always consistently busy and make that a Starbucks, which made sense. Um, it's in a better spot in the parking lot. Um, it's easier to get into and out of, uh, and it can accommodate a line pretty decently. But they ended up, in fact, they even closed the Jack in the Box. And they're like, oh, come in soon, Starbucks. It's like, what? Not my not my Jack in the Box. That place was um, was kind of a staple in college, uh, you know, because being open 24 hours, the, the, the KFC Taco Bell wasn't open. But you had Jack's and Del Taco, which were both 24-hour locations. So, you know, whenever I was staying up late, do homework or study, um, they were always open. So I could run down and... You know, get a bite or get some coffee and you know, get out of the house for a minute, and it was just really convenient. 
to have there. So they ended up making, they ended up closing the KFC Taco Bell place, which made sense in that they weren't ever really that busy uh, and put a Starbucks there. But in terms of location, they can't really accommodate uh, the line or the line, uh, the line as well. Uh, when it gets when it gets crowded there, it's it's really bad. Like that that other side of the parking lot's horrible to navigate. Even before the Star Wars was there, it was always kind of kind of sketchy um, because there's kind of some sharp corners there because of the building placement and people kind of speed through there. Even though there's you know little uh, there's little um, uh, speed bumps to kind of deter that, but they're like but they're those really tiny tiny speed bumps that you can't. You know, it's like through there. Oh, the bags. We didn't empty the bags. We should empty our bags before we go any further. Um, yeah, they're those like super tiny speed bumps that, I mean, like, you're like, come on. That's not going to do shit. <laughs> that's not going to do anything. Um, interesting. I don't know. I think this one might be a little easier, even though the accuracy is shit. I'm probably not ever really going to use it, um, but just something to keep in case we hit a we hit a rough patch or we should keep the caustic weapon because we may need one. And these we're not really using anymore. Just get rid of this other stuff that's just taking up space. No big deal. Tons of shields. Transfusion. Yeah, we'll get rid of these guys. You know what? I'm not really using this. And it's just taking up sp space. The rifleman seems to be uh, more my style. So we'll just stick with the rifleman. Anywho. So in fact, the, the other day... Um, I had gone. Uh, I had gone to the Starbucks, and um, I I hate going through their drive-through. So like, I always just park and then get out and eat, even still, like parking there and walking around is bad because the the whole design of that part of the parking lot. It's like it's like one way this way, one way that way, and then it kind of gets kind of confusing when you get toward the center of the parking lot because and like people don't pay attention and you know people are on their phone and goofing around or talking to talking to the person in the car and, and they're they're just it's i hate driving through there i can't stand driving through there so whenever i do it um i'm always extra cautious because you, you never know and on this particular day i'm glad i was um i was i had just gotten um some tea from starbucks and i was i, I was in my car ready to, to head out you know, car was on, warmed up, and I was heading out, and like kind of out of the corner of my eye, I saw this car coming, and like you know what, there is a stop right there, but you know, people don't necessarily pay attention to stops, so it's like, well, let me just slow down a bit, wait and see what they do. Well, yeah, uh, this gal driving did not see the stop, and just cut the corner. It still almost hit me, even though I was parked and stopped. So you know she was she was driving way too quickly for that for that little uh, um, for that little section there and it was crazy like she she kind of like so like I kind of followed her out but there was a car backing up so she had to slow down and then when that car left you know so I'm behind her waiting to make a right. Uh, to kind of sneak out the back way out of the parking lot so uh, I can hit the side street to go back home. And she whips around the corner and floors it straight. But the way the uh, the sidewalk is there for the store, because there's a there's an auto zone there on the corner, so the so the sidewalk kind of branches out and over, and she didn't see it, so she went straight up the sidewalk. And like you could hear, you like I saw and I heard everything, and it was just, oh, uh, you know, part of me kind of, you know, does sympathize. And I feel bad, like that, that sucks, that you can't the car, but you know, you shouldn't be driving so quickly in a parking lot of all places. 
So she went straight up the sidewalk and then straight back down again. And you heard the crunch. You heard, um, you know, and she was driving like a little Chevy Cruze. You know, it's not like she was in like a, a big truck where you wouldn't have even felt or noticed it. No, she was in like a little compact car. <laughs> so she, and like, I kind of like, oh shit. Yeah, let's not die. Let's not die. Let's let's hang tight here for a second and recharge. More cherry coke, please. So, oh snap. See ya. Uh, <laughs> so she, yeah, she went up and like, I'm like, okay, she's not gonna move. She, I think she was in shock or something. And the other lady in the car was like, I don't know. She looked pissed. Like I don't know. So maybe it wasn't her car. Maybe. I don't know, but, like, I kind of, like, drove by and, like, kind of, like, peeked over to make sure they were okay, and then she just kind of, like, nodded and waved me on, and I'm like, that's what you get for speeding in a parking lot, and assumingly a parking lot that you're not familiar with, of all places, because, you know, obviously, if you're local, you're there, you know what the inside's like, and, you know, if she would have known, she wouldn't have done something so dumb. So, I mean, again, you could hear, you know, all the damage right there. So, you know, you probably, again, I'm no, I'm no car expert, but you could have, you know, maybe bent the control arms and, you know, messed up your shocks or struts, you know, at that impact. Even though she, she wasn't like, I mean, it, it's not like she was going like 40 miles an hour, but, you know, she rounded the corner and just went flat out, gunned it, you know, you know, tires chirping straight. Um, and yeah, so that's definitely going to cause some damage, you know, that's going to cost a little bit to get, uh, you know, at a minimum, at a minimum, you're probably going to need to get that car realigned, um, uh, with that kind of a, of, of a strong impact. <laughs> um, it's like, I am really glad I drive really slowly and really carefully because, you know what, people be crazy. People are crazy. And, I mean, I legit did feel bad, but it's like, you know, well, you kind of brought that on yourself. So, that'll be a good lesson learned. Like, back uh, back when I was in call, like, actually, that, that kind of reminds me of, of kind of the lesson of being patient when you're behind the wheel. Uh, when I was in college... Um, I was I was very fortunate enough to have you know a really fun, quick uh, sports sedan. I had a I had a Subaru WRX. It's a 2010, you know, in Rally Blue, and um, at the time it was mostly all factory stock. You know, I, I was still a broke ass college kid, um, uh, but I had I had modified the um, um, I had done a. Uh, uh, an exhaust system it was a cap back and and actually it was actually directly from the factory so you could order uh we we ordered the upgrade directly from the dealer and so it sounded nice you know it looked great i i love that car you know and i had some other little minor cosmetic stuff like you know i did a shift knob um oil cap and battery tie down and um a front strut tower brace so you know did some pretty some pretty minor things, you know, nothing fancy. Um, I didn't really continue uh, modifying the car until after I had finished school and, you know, I had like a, a full-time job and could afford to really, um, to really do those things. So, you know, having, having a quick car, you know, tended to garner a lot of attention. And uh, forgot if I mentioned, but it was in you know, uh, if you enjoy autos, it was in the classic uh, World Rally Blue color, which is, you know, kind of a the cliche slash iconic color for a Subaru. So car got a lot of attention already. And it was, I wouldn't say loud, like the, since it was like a factory add-on exhaust, it wasn't obnoxiously loud, like, you know, when you can like hear, hear it from like, you know, several blocks down. But it had a really nice tone to it. Had a very deep, kind of a boomy 
uh, character to it, and it did drone. That was kind of my my. It did drone on the highway uh, a bit. You know, at the higher RPM, it could get a little annoying. Um, but just for normal street driving, you know, you could pretty go under the radar. Uh, you know, with the cops and stuff. Well, I was driving to school, um, and I was actually taking some side streets. Um, like the highway was all messed up that morning, so it's like, well, I'll just take some side streets and get off. So. I was taking some side streets, heading out, and from what I remember, is I got stuck behind this like seemingly endless column of slow cars. Everyone was just driving so slow this morning. It's like I gotta go to school. I gotta, you know, I gotta find parking. I got to, um, you know, I gotta go get my morning, you know, dose of caffeine. I got, you know, I have things to do in the morning. So you know, I'm trying to get in, you know, and it's early. It's, it's, I mean, it is, it's not super early, but it's early in that morning where you are just dealing with, you know, with some of that rush hour traffic. So I got stuck behind this seemingly endless line of slow cars. And finally, it's like, finally I was in the right lane and it was a small, not a small street. Like it was a main street, but the speed limit there was 35 because there were a lot of shops and stores, but you know, people normally drove 40, 50 there, you know, no problem for the most part. So I'm sitting there waiting, waiting, stuck behind the slow traffic. Finally, the left lane clears up. And by then, I was already so irritated. So like, oh, uh, you know, I just want to get out of here. So I downshifted into like second gear. And I just, you know, went pretty much, you know, three quarters throttle. You know, I'm almost full throttle to pass. And right there, flew right by the cop. And I'm like, oh, of course. And it was a motorcycle cop, traffic enforcement. So, you know, maybe if he was uh, in a car, he might have, you know, kind of, eh, you know, do I really want to pull this kid over? Eh, you know, maybe, maybe not. You know, are they uh, uh, a slight tangent? But but apparently there there is not an official quota they're supposed to hit, but they're expected to hand out tickets because, you know, people are going to speed. People are going to drive recklessly. So it it's kind of like uh, I took a I took a, a class in uh, at university. Actually, I was at community college at the time and I took a criminal justice class uh, for a requirement. And the instructor for the class, he was uh, a former police officer. And what he said was and he pretty much said just that he's like i mean there's not like a hard number you have to hit like say well you're you have to write um i don't know just i'm i'm gonna say 50 tickets a month you know it's like a soft number it's like you're depending on what part of the city you're patrolling or whether you're in it's like you're expected to hit so many every month oh crap i forgot the gatling turret is still there Let's see if we can flank them this way. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, it's it's not like anyone's surprised, but it's still kind of interesting to point out that it's like you're... I mean, people are going to, again, people will speed, they will drive recklessly, they will day walk, they will break whatever, you know, you know, the soft laws, you know, the, you know, the no big deal whatever so it's all right you know here's a citation don't do it again you know be on your way type of stuff it's like all right whatever but if they're not it's like they kind of look at you a bit more closely to see how many you know you are writing you know say like your your target is 50 a month and you wrote like 40 it's like okay well you know maybe it was just a slow month or maybe you know something else happened you know there's some other variables here but if you're like writing 10 or 20 tickets a month and you're supposed to be writing 50, it's like, okay, are you working? Are you are you doing your job? Like what's what's going on? Why <laughs> why so few tickets, bro? Why so few tickets? Uh, anywho, so yeah, he pulled me over and you know, I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna be chill and you know, maybe he'll let me off. Well he didn't, you know, I did get I did get a speeding ticket and it was I don't remember the exact amount, but it was somewhere between Two to three hundred dollars, which again isn't uh, 
it's not the end of the world, but when you're, you know, when you're a college kid and you don't have a ton of disposable income anyway, yeah, it does suck. And that, it hurt, it definitely hurt the pocketbook. So that's like, all right, you know what? I got to calm down. Um, you know, I can't afford to, uh, uh, oh, that was a beautiful move. I can't afford to, you know, keep paying these all the time. But again, it was it was that lesson in sort of, you know, humility. And, you know, the cop was otherwise cool. You know, they weren't a jerk. It's like, you know, I pulled you over. It's like, you know what? It's like, well, what did I do? It's like, no, I know I was speeding. He's like, yeah, you know, you were you were driving a bit too fast. Kind of exhibition of speed down there. Um, you know, like, what's going on? It's like, you know what? I go to school over here. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get to class. And there's a lot of traffic. And he's like, I understand, you know. But, you know, you got to be you know, responsible one plan, you know, n never argue with the cop. It doesn't go well. You know, if you want to argue with them, take it to court. Like, that's where you go to argue the ticket. You know, if you really think you didn't deserve that ticket or if you want to, you know, make a point otherwise, then yeah, just go to court. Just... Ah, take it to court. It's easier. It's yeah. sitting there and arguing with a traffic cop is, you know, is not going to get you anywhere. I mean, that's all these guys do all day is write tickets, you know, when they're when they're on the motorbikes. You know, on the car, you know, if they're in the car, eh, maybe, maybe not. But if they're if they're on a motorcycle, they're pretty much all doing traffic enforcement, to my understanding. And you just gotta take the L. Unless it's like super egregious, like, dude, like I was not speeding or that wasn't me. You pulled over the wrong guy. You pulled over um you know, that other person had like the exact same car as you it's like yeah you pulled the wrong person over my friend yeah um unless it's one of those cases of mistaken identity it's like i'm not gonna argue and you know he was chill about it he's like you know take it easy be careful when you're out there you know i don't want to you know i don't want to cite you again you know because it will be more next time i told him yeah you know what this this isn't my normal route to school i'm just taking it because of the traffic on the highway and you know i'll be more careful and you know i apologized and you know he was chill about it and you know he let me go and i went on my way with my ticket and again it was humbling um and then uh, i told my pops later and he was you know he wasn't like mad or angry but he's like well you know you're you're gonna have to be responsible you're you're gonna have to come up with the money and pay for it and you know that'll that'll be uh a financial and a life lesson for you and since then i have not gotten a ticket since then that was the last one actually the point of uh, <laughs> another interesting point though was uh it was in the same car years later totally different city different circumstance um you know i actually swapped out the exhaust for the car and again car was pretty much still all stock otherwise but um, I was on I was on YouTube and kind of looking for something. Like, you know what? I want to change the exhaust up a little bit. And, um, like I had really wanted something just loud, something really really loud. <laughs> and well, I found one. I definitely did. Um, it was uh, it was a custom. It would be a custom built exhaust with uh, a a Flowmaster Super 10 muffler, which is pretty much like the smallest muffler they they make at least at the time so i mean it was almost like you were straight piping it but you had a muffler you know there was i think i think there was a resonator in there and yeah. but that sucker was loud but it sounded really good too it wasn't just obnoxious loud it was like wow like i like this so i had had it installed and um you know i went to a, a reputable uh a reputable uh, exhaust shop that was local and you know they quoted me a very fair price and they did it you know, I don't know a couple hours you know it wasn't long I forgot exactly how long but I had it back that same day you know, several hours later tops uh, and yeah it was it was really well built it sounded incredible um, but I, it was like, wow. I mean, it was, I mean, even just driving home, you know, people were like, you know, you can kind of tell. <laughs> people were giving you looks. It's like, oh, he's one of those kids. Uh, you know, he's one of these, you know, 
Ooh, nice upgrade. Slightly quicker recharge rate, which is nice. No more capacity, but... You know, I'll take it. I'll take it. Not bad. Not nice little, nice little boost there. Well, uh, where are we going? We're going this way to the southwest. So, up, oh, they're fighting again. Let's hang tight here. Close enough to kind of see what they're doing, but not so close that they that I'm gonna aggro from what I can tell. I should still have enough ammo to get through here. Oh crap! Was I spotted? Did I get too close? Maybe they'll leave me alone. I want to recharge the health as well. So... Yeah, so I had this new exhaust and I I went out on a Saturday morning. You know, I kind of wanted to kind of get on it more because, you know, in during the week there's just too much traffic and there's not... You know, don't have as much time to really... Um, kind of see what it sounded like under different loads so i got up really early it was must have been six seven in the morning saturday morning i'm like all right let's go took it around no one no cops left or right everything was just quiet streets were really empty i'm like cool i made a right turn went wide open first to second gear and then shut it off and i'm like wow this is awesome and then I drove down a bit more, and then I made another right turn, and all of a sudden, there's a cop behind me. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> where did you come from? Uh, where did you come from? Well, again, slight caveat to the story is, I had actually had done some extensive modifications to the vehicle before, but I had returned it to stock because I was considering selling at the time. I didn't end up selling it. Uh, until much much later, but I had returned the car to stock other than the exhaust and I also kept the uh, The short throw shifter on the car. So again, really basic basic setup nothing fancy great You know nice setup for daily driving um, But you know I had done you know, I had you know an intake uh, boost control solenoid upgraded the inner cooler uh, Upgraded the fuel pump fuel injectors, you know the whole shebang You know it was pretty much all full bolt-on um, had the car custom tuned And you know it was you know it was it was really quick, but I was gonna sell it so I'm like well It would be easier to sell stock normally or practically stock So I'm like well We'll put it back to stock and then we'll sell the parts individually um, You know get some of my money back and then we'll, uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll sell it. But I'm like, you know what? It, I kind of, that's when I, it, it kind of hit me. It's like, you know what? I kind of want to play with the exhaust a bit too before I go in. I kept, I kept the original exhaust I had on there anyway, just in case. So that's when it kind of hit me. It kind of dawned on me like. Oh, you know, well, you know, since we're going to go back to stock, I can keep both, and then I'll have another one to sell just in case as an option. It's like, you know what, if you want the quiet exhaust, you know, I'll throw in, you know, I'll throw in the, uh, uh, the quieter, more, more, uh, you know, daily friendly exhaust, uh, you know, if you like it for, you know, a small, a small bit extra money. So I figured, well, if anything, you know, it'll, it may help me sell it. So I had just put the car back to stock, thank goodness, because it would not have been street legal at the time. So I got really lucky. And <laughs> yeah, so I just happened to be pulled over um, by the cop. And again, cop was like super chill and, you know, he was, uh, um, you know, he was cool about it, but he actually had me come out of the car and. I guess he might have thought I was into, you know, you know, uh, into the illegal street racing type of a deal, which I was not. So, like, he actually took me out, which I thought was kind of weird. Uh, he actually took me out and, you know, he patted me down. And I don't know, again, without, without revealing too much, too much information, you know, I don't, I don't look the least bit intimidating, uh, or the type, so... 
that's why it was kind of weird. It's like, okay, I mean, no worries, but kind of awkward. Uh, but he's like, yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, guys are armed. They have, you know, they'll have a firearm or they'll have, you know, some other weapon on them. It's like, I, I don't have anything in my car that's even remotely a weapon. I mean, maybe, uh, like, I had a set of tools in my trunk I always kept in just in case. Uh, hand tools. But would you consider hand tools a weapon? Well, they can be used as a weapon, but primarily they're hand tools. They're, they have a function. And so this this cop just happened to happen to be a car enthusiast. So he's like, "Well, what what do you have done to the car?" I'm like, "I just have the exhaust on." He's like, "He's like, okay, I'm gonna give you one opportunity to be straight with me, you know." And so he's like, "You know, did you do full turbo back? You know, you know, do you have, you know?" I'm like, "Whoa!" Like, I mean, he he knew the terminology. He had me pop the hood. Um, like the hood's all OEM stock, factory, you know, factory stock setup, just the exhaust. And the exhaust wasn't a straight pipe. It was loud. It was really loud, but, um, it did have mufflers in it. You know, I didn't cut the mufflers or anything. It was still, you know, it was still legal, so to speak. You know, although the noise, you know, in, in terms of the noise, um, that's probably where they would have. <clears throat> you know, giving me the most grief, but no, he was, um, you know, he was more into the muscle car stuff, he ate, he had a, he had a Pontiac GTO, uh, not the classic GTO, he had, a the modern, um, the modern, um, version, the, like, the sort of early, like, 2004, 2005, um, somewhere around there, the, the version that had the, I think it came with the 5, it had a 5.7 or, originally from the, uh, like, Camaro Corvette, I think it was the uh, LS1 engine. Memory serves. Oh, so close. So close. And then the second version of it, uh, they went to the LS2 motor, went to the 6 liter, and horsepower output was like around, it was like a 400 horsepower car. So, you know, pretty quick car, you know, good looking car. So he knew his stuff. He knew what he was talking about. Uh, so, he knew if I was lying, he'd probably catch me. So that's why he's like, before he asked me, he's like, I'm going to give you one chance to be straight with me. You know, be honest. You know, it'll be a lot easier. If you're just honest with me. Um, if you're not, you know, then, you know, we're going we're gonna to have consequences. He was chill. He, and he didn't write me a ticket. Not even a, no fix it ticket. No, okay, put it back, just talk and go. All he said was, um, you know, you weren't really speeding. Um, but, you know, you would have kind of caught me for, you know, reckless driving or exhibition of speed because, you know, I did accelerate, you know, very quickly, very suddenly for no reason other than to hear the exhaust. So it was like, <laughs> I mean, he was, again, he was super chill about it, so it was kind of shocking. Because, yeah, he, he could have got me for a citation right there really easily. But I was cool with him, and, you know, I didn't really give him a hard time, you know. Don't be a jerk. Again, don't be a jerk. You know where you know you're not gonna you know even if there's you know if you're if your buddies in the car or your girls in the car and you're like you know I'm gonna I'm gonna be cool and tough and you're like man screw you you're a pig and you know try to act all hard it's not gonna get you anywhere good you're just gonna end up with the worst time you know I'm not advocate you kiss their ass either just be polite answer the questions and be honest and the the uh the experience should go okay. And if not, then that's when you can take it to court, that's when you can file a complaint and, you know, go down that legal that legal road, uh, if need be. Wow, we went off on a total tangent there. But that's okay. That's okay. Anyway, well, we pretty much knocked everything out here. Everything's done. Let's go turn this sucker in. Man, I hate these revolver. Three, three rounds. What am I do with three rounds? That's ridiculous. Who wants a three-round revolver? See, this one might be interesting. The incendiary one. Six rounds, two times the incendiary chance. That's. 
get rid of one of these cheap guns here that we're not going to use. Pick this bad boy up. We might play around with it later. I don't know. Maybe because he's not really a pistol, a pistol guy. You know, he's not a. He's not like Mordecai. Get a. Mordecai is awesome with a revolver. Just got him the right way. Oh, come on. He's knocked out all the guys. Are these new spawns or? Huh. Interesting. Done and done. It's uh, Saturday afternoon right now. And I'm pretty much all used up all my uh, excess vids, so I'm all I'm all um, kind of on on point with where I'm now releasing them, you know, right before or I'm recording right before we upload. So I'm gonna upload this tomorrow morning. It'll be Sunday. Sunday morning. Like I like to. Uh, gosh darn it! Who's shooting me now? I like to um, set the upload Saturday evening. You know, do the editing, save, get everything saved up. That way, God, die! You know that hurt. Nailed it. Now we Sunday morning, everything's uploaded, everything's set to go. Today's actually well it's kinda of weird because it's it's warm, kind of a humid warm. It's really cloudy. Hot. It says 72 degrees, but it feels warmer. Yeah, according to uh, the weather app I'm on, it the humidity is at 74%. Which is pretty high. Um where I work, it's where I work, it's a lot. It's a lot uh, more humid. It's only seventy there, but the humidity is eighty-one percent. Gross. Gross. No thanks. Glad I'm at home today. Yeah. This weather though always makes me want to watch the Goonies. It's just that that overcast weather. I don't know. Maybe it's just because that's kind of how the movie is. It has a lot of you know. I think the film. I think the film. Was uh, film was filmed in in Oregon, Astoria. If memory serves, I'm out. You know, you know Oregon's in the Pacific Northwest, so it kind of has that. You know that that weather is normal for that area. Ah, there you are. Fight our way through. Boom. Next. First try. We're alive. We're alive. Let's go. I'm trying to run low on ammo. So, now would be a good time to exit. Let's clear up some of the junk. You know what? I want to look at some of these rifles, too. Like Some of these might be interesting to play with, so... We'll sell the junky ones first. Whenever I see like surplus weapons, I I I'll, or like cheap the cheap stuff i always imagine it's sort of like a more fitting for the uh you know for the bandit classes you know maybe some of them have good gear but like the lower level bandits you know they can't afford the uh the high-end stuff so they make do with these really inexpensive um guns until they can you know kill someone and upgrade so to speak you know if this was more i guess kind of real life Four thirty and seventy three, four thirty and eighty two. Yeah, upgrade. 
even better. Nice. So we got two little upgrades on on the shield in one day. You know, some days you're just lucky. You just get the right gear that you're, you know. I mean, it's still not a great shield by no means, but it's it's not bad. Let's ammo up. We're coming at 40 minutes. Wow. This one took a long time. It took a little longer than I thought it would take. I could remember it being being a shorter a shorter quest, but I guess I was wrong. Okay, that's all done. Done, done, done. Let's look at these other rifles and see how they compare. So let's see. Okay, this is one of the large clip rifles, so let's not compare that to that one. Let's look at this one. This is also a support machine gun, so that would be more in comparison to this guy. So we can compare those two. The Mauler, even that, the, the fire rate's pretty slow. Even though it's 40 more points of damage. Accuracy's a tad bit lower, but not enough to probably notice. Clip size is the same, but if it has half the fire rate for... Uh, nah, we'll stick with that one. Okay, so let's compare. Let's see here. So you're going to give up about 30 points of damage, but a lot more accurate, which is nice. And the clip size is also significantly bigger and a slightly slower fire rate. You know, I think with the support gun, since since they do fire so slowly, like you need that extra bit of accuracy. Because that, that extra bit of fire rate doesn't really offset losing 24 points to accuracy, even though you're getting 30 more points of damage as well. I think with the slower moving assault rifles, accuracy is more important because you got to get every shot to count because you're just firing that much more slowly. So let's look at this one. Uh, kind of the same deal. You give up about 30 points in accuracy. You lose seven points in 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 uh, you, so 30 more points of damage, but you lose seven points in accuracy. Identical fire rate, but 30 less rounds in the clip. So, no, we'll keep the purple. Um, maybe for like the slower enemies, we'll sell the rest. Uh, maybe for some of the slower moving enemies, that one's a... Uh, you know, plus with the upgrades I get. Um, I mean, shoot, like, I <laughs> keep forgetting what, what I have equipped in here, but... Um, shield recharge I've got overload for all guns is 60% extra which is nice and then the class mod you get three to assault two to more to overload two to impact excuse me so damage recoil reduction is good so two points of overload skill so if we divide it by five that means each each point here gives me 12% magazine size. So if you add an extra 24 points, that's an 84% magazine size increase with the bonus points uh, from the class mod. So that's why we go from the gun comes with a standard clip size of 36, but I'm at 66. So 30 extra rounds, almost double the size of the, uh, of the original firearm, which is pretty impressive. You know, you're only reloading half the time, and you know, bigger clip size means you're reloading less. If you let, if you spend less time reloading, that means you're shooting more. So it is, in fact, an indirect way to increase your damage per second, which is kind of the name of the game. You know, you, you want that quick DPS here. Hmm. Quick DPS is, you know, can make or break you. Got the height. Curses. Ah, grenade. Can we get up there? Can we get up there? Come on, 
combat cannon Eat lead. Eat lead. And... Not quite. Come on! Oh! Still using Sledge's shotgun. After all this time. Get that shield up. There it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. The death animation, he's just hanging over. Oh, that's awesome. Very realistic. Normally they don't kind of slump over that way. I actually kind of like the, the defender layout. It's kind of an interesting, uh, you know, I mean, do, do, uh, you know, I don't know if actual militaries do this, you know, where you have a, a small sidearm with a big, with a big shield, maybe like, maybe riot police or certain specialty groups, but it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to be necessarily an effective way, uh, considering a lot of firearms require, you know, two hands to, to hold and to operate correctly. Okay, where are we? Oh, yeah. We'll head south. Ah! Oh, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. Oh. Crap. Well, now we gotta take care of him. Wait for that Scorpio turret to... Leave. You know, I'm gonna swing by, uh... I'm probably gonna swing by GameStop later. I still got that game... That game, uh game card or that gift card I have not used and it's burning a hole in my pocket you know what other game I've been kind of curious to look at uh, but I never see it I've never seen it used I've only ever seen it um, brand new was uh, uh, Ace Combat it's called Air Combat Ace Combat I liked uh, there was a uh, there was a like an air fighting game from the N64 that that I own, and it's not like an amazing game by any by any means. Uh, but I still really enjoyed it, and it's still fun to play from time to time. That was uh, Aero Fighters Assault. You know, kind of, you know, it has a, an arcadey feel to it, but they also try to add some realistic factors uh, to the game. You know, there's a both a, both a third and a first and a third person perspectives. Um, that you can use while you're while you're playing, but again, still has that arcadey type of a feel where it's not ultra realistic. You know, it's not like you're playing a flight sim. But yeah, I never see. I mean, I used to kind of like once in a while you could see a copy, but not not the most recent one in the series Part Seven. Um, you see some of the older the older versions. There there'd be a copy here, you know, once in a while, but. I never see this. Um, I never see them anymore. So I'm guessing they're pretty rare. Maybe not a uh, super mass produced. All right, come on, come on, recharge. Let's get in this. Oh, crap! So close. They really don't want me getting in there, do they? Oh, ah, I waited too long to get behind cover. Yeah, they got me pinned pretty good. Three badass engineers, and they're you know, with those turrets there. They can just keep me, keep me there indefinitely. Well, <laughs> I kind of solved my problem. <laughs> Oh, they spawn me on the other side. Okay. Well, I guess I don't have to deal with them anymore. Thanks, game. I think. I kind of wanted to. Oh, well, whatever. What ifs? What ifs? What? Oh, shock weapon. I'm like, what is this? What is this? Where? Oh, there you are. Like, how did this... 
No, you don't. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. Now you're dead. Your problems are over. Annoying little shock weapon. Curses! Alright. Go! No! No! And I lost my turret in the process. And I'm out of grenades. Gosh darn. There we go. Got some space. All right, good stuff. Say goodbye to that many turrets, and we're dead. Or oh, they're dead. All right, almost there. Are we? Dang, I burned through all the assault rifle. You know that that fire rate is just really quick, but the gun isn't like super super powerful. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we find a good, uh, a, a good combat rifle upgrade soon. I'm out of man. Crap. I'm like, why aren't you shooting, bro? Why aren't you shooting me? Get back here, you little shit. Yeah, put me back into that little trap over there with your other buddies. Ah, okay. Well, at least we got one out of the way. Turn the quest, turn the quest. Sweet. No time for who betrayed whom. Steel has taken the key and is already on the way to the vault. For me, take the fish down. Oh, that's annoying. It's like I'm in the middle here. I'm in the middle of combat here, and you're just like, oh, here's the quest! Why? But uh, and of course. You know, one of my gripes about the original is you can't round the corner, you can't... It's like, oh, well look, you know, now you're dead. Uh, I can... Oh, trying to get that second wind? Well, you can't. You can't. See you. I don't know how but anyway, you it, this but seems I like a decent place to stop. Again. You've surprised All me right. this time. Got Empty this Listen, treasure chest here. No time to waste. You must immediately reach the vault. We're, we're already coming oh, on 50 minutes. Um, and next time we, we can always just fast travel to uh, to the next area. So this will be a good place to stop for now. And yep, we're after steel. So I believe this is pretty much the last quest of the game uh, without revealing any spoilers and we're about midway to level 35 so pretty close I think we'll 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 probably hit 35 by then we do have some a lot of combat coming up as well so it should be interesting um, I'm trying to time it correctly but you know it'll be at least one more episode maybe two to finish up if we shoot for about an hour each, and maybe even not that long. We'll see. Um, anyway, thanks for staying to the end. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on a future episode. And I'm looking forward to catching you all in the next one. Later days.